It's the Logan Power Show Inspirational and motivational It's the Logan Power Show Informational to help you grow Power Show. And now the host, Calvin Logan. Basketball fans, welcome back to the Florence Center and Florence, South Carolina. You're watching South Carolina High School League Basketball State semifinal action presented to you by Absolute Total Care. You just witnessed, well, if you're just tuning in now, I feel bad for you because you just witnessed a classic between Military Magnet and Lakeview on the girls' side if you were watching our previous game. Hopefully now we have an equally as competitive game for you in this one between Cross, the Trojans, and the Bethune Bowman Mohawks. Right off the tip, energy ablazes. We got a great crowd in the building. You can count the basket. Foul was against Dominic Lampkin for Cross. And you'll have to bear with us for a moment, folks. Thanks for your patience. Fully set up in the booth now. Bethune Bowman in the home whites, and this game Cross in the blues. Similar to the shade Kentucky wears for their home uniforms, road uniforms, I should say. Bethune Bowman featuring a starting lineup of Ty J. Elliott. All-State player Bryson Robinson wearing number five. He just passed to his teammate on the other end, Jalen Avenger. His brother Jordan Avenger also in the starting group. And Terrence McFadden rounds out the starting unit for head coach Charles McCray. Bryson Robinson, the All-State player, the son of Charles McCray, his head coach. Seemed very close relationship not just together on the court, but spiritually off it and with their community. Hoping for a big win in this game tonight. On the other side for Cross, the Trojans sport a starting group from Dominic Lampkin, Micah Flute, James Way, Caden Ramsey, an All-State player, and Preston Fuller. Defense and rebounding, the keys to this game, not just for Cross, but for Bethune Bowman as well, whoever rebounds and plays better defense in this game most likely will win according to both of the coaches. Here is that All-State player, Bryson Robinson, the son of the head coach, giving away to Ty J. Elliott on his left. Elliott sizing up defenders. A travel called against Jalen Ovinger. of this game will face Christ Church in the state championship game later this week. The state championship game will occur Saturday. Something hopefully, well for both these teams, they hope to be a part of it. Surely. Pass inside, tipped away by a cross defender. Again, cross and the Road Blues, Bethune Bowman in the home whites. Shaquan Boone, the head coach for Cross. Young man. Not too far away in age from some of his players. The energy 
in this building. Picking up from the high and left off at with our previous contest. There is a nice shot from Weston Robinson. Pull up jumper from the high post. Yes, indeed, that young man does have his bag with him today. 4-0 lead for Bethune Bowman in the opening moments. Aaron pass, Cross saves it. Now trying to get back into the play. And a blocking foul called against Bryson Robinson, it seems. That is true. First foul for Robinson, first team foul for Bethune Bowman in this game. Inside the pass, on the other direction. Tough look on the lay-in, no good. Second effort for McFadden is good. And the foul. Bethune Bowman with all the energy early on. Dominic Lampkin called for his second foul in the early moments of this one. Not a recipe for success for Cross. Got 10 senior guards going to have to play smart for the remainder of this game. Terrence McFadden sinks the free throw. Three points the hard way for Bethune Bowman. Derek Simon checks into the bench. He's a key member for this Mohawks group. Not a part of the starting five. He's a senior. He's one of only a few seniors on the team. There's five of them in total. Across the half court line. Now getting into the half court set. Bethune Bowman defending ruthlessly. The ball stripped away by Simon. Going the other direction. Are the Mohawks. There it is. Bryson Robinson. Once again, the jumper is good. An early 10 0 lead for Bethune Bowman. Cross takes the timeout. 444 on the clock. 60 seconds between now and we come back right here on the NFHS Network. Halfway through our headquarter, Cross held scoreless. Bethune Bowman on the run. Foul called on the play against Cross. Number 23, Preston Fuller on the receiving end of the whistle. It's his first infraction. Third team fell for Cross already in this game. Here's the inbounds. Tajay Elliott, five foot nine sophomore guard, giving way to the corner. Jordan Jalen Aventer, my apologies with the turnover. Cross now back with possession. 
4.22 to go in the first quarter. Wang. Joiner off the bench. Way again, the floater. Off the back iron, no good. Out of bounds, last touch by Cross. and strength. Scrum on the floor for the ball again. And another turnover. Two turnovers, three turnovers in a span of 10 seconds. Topsy turny this game is. Both teams just fighting to maintain possession of the ball for a few moments. Ja'Cory Judson back in the game for Bethune Bowman. for Bethune Bowman, no good. That was Judson on the shot. Nearly a turnover again for Cross. Instead, they finally break way on the scoreboard. Lavelle Joyner underneath the basket. 12-2 our score. erupts from the crowd. Robinson misses from range. He's going for the heat check. <laughs> Nearly a turnover again. The energy in this building. Pretty seismic. Say, at least for the crowd on hand, it's not a full house, but at times it feels like it. Both support groups are really loud, cheering their team on. You can tell how much this game means to both communities involved. Elliot looking to the corner, pass knocked out of bounds, last touch by Bryson Robinson. It's cross basketball. Joiner, cross court pass, deflected out of bounds by Bryson Robinson. This is the first meeting for these two teams this season. Catch and shoot attempt for Flute, a miss, and rebound by Robinson again. This young man's all over the floor in early action in this game. Robinson kicking to Elliott in the corner, the shot from range, no good, a rebound by Caden Ramsey. Ramsey standing six foot five, but he feels much taller than that with his wingspan. Turnaround, waved off, a foul occurs on the floor. Shot doesn't count. The foul will go against Robinson, his second whistle of the game. Second team foul for the Mohawks. Robinson will have to exit the game for the remainder of the quarter. He's replaced by Jordan Alvinger. Oh, 
Cross inbounds. The pass wayward, it's too strong. Head coach Shaquan Boone arguing for a deflection and he gets the call. The Bethune Bowman crowd can't believe it. I'll be honest, I didn't see a deflection, but if the officials did, the decision's up to them, not me. And no, no deflection is called on the play. Bethune Bowman will down after all. Robinger, Elliott. Judson turns it over. Cross with possession. Fuller driving to the rack. Loses the ball out of bounds. Last touch by Bethune Bowman. Terrence McFadden back into the game for the Mohawks. Pass inbounds. Way. Fuller. A shot. From Joyner, no good. Ramsey. Rebounded it. Tried to deflect the ball off of an opponent's person. Out of bounds to retrieve possession, if you will. Official timeout on the floor. Looks like a cross player in the midst of tying their shoe. Hear me out. Basketball with flip flops. Just kidding. That, that should never happen. McFadden. Tajay Elliott. Pass knocked away from the outstretched arms of Preston Fuller. Count the foul and the basket for Caden Ramsey. A big bucket there for Cross. The foul goes against Tajay Elliott, his first of the game. Third team foul for the Mohawks. Caden Ramsey. Already cut the deficit to single digits. Now cuts into it even further. 12-5 our score. 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Terrence McFadden loses the ball. But his teammate, Jakari Judson, picks it back up. Looking for McFadden in the corner. Now it's Simon. Simon, a miss from point blank. Second effort is good from Jalen Ovinger. Cross going the other direction. Joyner loses the rock. McFadden has it. Judson with 13 on the clock. Back to McFadden. McFadden is walloped by a couple of cross defenders. Caden Ramsey whistled for the foul. It's his first personal. A hard foul at that. A fourth team foul for Cross in this opening quarter. McFadden at the free throw line. A make on his first effort. Into the game enters Jordan Ovinger, the second of two Ovinger brothers on this Bethune Bowman team. with a rebound on the miss in the second shot for McFadden. Deep shot from way at the buzzer. Offline, 15 to five, our score at the end of the first half. All Bethune Bowman in the opening quarter of play. Three quarters still ahead of us though. You're watching live coverage of the South Carolina basketball state semifinals presented to you by Absolute Total Care on the NFHS Network.
All right, basketball fans, we're back. In action at the Florence Center. Patrick and Mark for you live with play-by-play -play coverage of this year's festivities. You're watching South Carolina High School League Basketball State Semifinals on the NFHS Network, presented to you by Absolute Total Care. 15-5, our score in the opening moments of the second quarter. Ty J. Elliott in transition for the Bethune Bowman Mohawks. Crosses not once, but not twice. Terrence McFadden with the floater, attacking the rim from the corner. McFadden with another big play for the Mohawks. Talking some smack on the other end of the floor to Caden Ramsey as well. Lavelle Joyner nearly stripped. Passes to Lampkin, a shot in the corner, no good. Elliott, the catch, spins away from the defender. Simon, going the other direction, loses the ball, now gets it back. Easy dish to McFadden under the hoop. 19 to five, our score, but through Bowman in front. Foul called on the floor. No shot on the play according to the official. The foul looks like it's going to go against Ja'Cory Judson. It's his first personal of the game. First team foul for Bethune Bowman in this quarter. Cross inbounds. Jamez Way driving. Kicking out to Lampkin. His shot from deep, no good. Joyner with the rebound. Pumps, feeds inside to Ramsey. Ramsey dishes to Preston Fuller, who makes one for mid range. 19 to 7, our score. Cross still trailing big. Ty J. Elliott hits the deck, called for a travel on the play, no foul called. Six twenty-nine to go in the second quarter. Jamez Way to Lavelle Joyner. Joyner back to Way. Way to the corner. Fuller from distance. It's short. Judson with the rebound, fouled. Trying to go coast to coast. Bryson Robinson. My apologies, Lavelle Joyner called for the foul in that sequence, not Bryson Robinson. The foul was against Lavelle Joyner of Cross for his first personal and the first team foul for the Trojans. McFadden swinging it to Judson, kicks to Elliott on the left wing who's whistled for the travel, trying to make a play. His head coach Charles McRae says shoot that from the bench, making a shooting motion with his right arm. Way resumes on the inbounds. Way and Joyner trading passes again. Cross struggling to get the ball past half court, whereas Bethune Bowman's issues occur after they get past half court. Sloppy basketball in a sense from both sides, although Bethune Bowman still with a double digit lead in this game. Derek Simon pushes the ball up the floor and immediately turns it over. Gets it back. Dishes to a teammate, a foul is called on the floor. Lavelle Joyner can't believe the call. He's on the other end of the whistle for his second such infraction of the night. Second team foul against Cross. Jordan Avenger at the free throw line for Bethune Bowman. The sophomore combo forward guard. Like a flute, back onto the court for Cross. Six foot seven, he stands. Tallest player from either team in this contest. And he looks every bit of that six foot seven frame, let me tell you. A make on the second effort for Jordan Avenger. 21 7 our score. It is all Bethune Bowman in the first half of play of this game. Preston Fuller driving. A rebound for Ramsey. Third effort from Flute is good. Going the other way, Judson 
Looking for a teammate, McFadden whistled for the travel before he gets the shot off. play still on the court. It looks like just trying to get some moisture off the hardwood in a few areas. While we have a moment, here's a word from our sponsors. High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, NFHSnetwork.com. Right here, we are high school sports. 21-9 our score, five minutes to play in our opening half between Cross and Bethune-Bowman. Bethune-Bowman setting the tone in early action. Cross trying to play catch up and have been all first half. Out of bounds, the call from the official off the deflection of a Bethune-Bowman player. The officials are going to conglomerate on this one. They're asking each other what they saw. See if this call gets changed or if it stands as it is. No change on the call. Confirmation from the secondary official. Inbound pass to Flute. Pass knocked away. Out of bounds. Last touched again by Bethune Bowman. The defense of this Mohawks team is hard to ignore. Physical, tough, strong basketball players pressuring the ball. Jalen Aventure. Aventure into the game. Here's Dominic Lampkin. To Preston Fuller. Jamez Way inside, flute, passing to Caden Ramsey, who's fouled on the shot. Foul goes against Derek Simon for his first whistle of the game. Second team foul. Caden Ramsey at the line for the second time tonight. You know, selfishly, I've always wondered what it would be like to be 6'5". I'll never know. Caden Ramsey knows. He knows how to shoot free throws too, among other things. 21-10 our score. Cross finally in the double digit point category. However, still trail in this game by double digits. A push called on the loose ball. This one I think is gonna go against Cross. And it should. It should be against Preston Fuller, number 23. It is. Third team foul for Cross. They started this game down 12 to nothing. An opening 12-point run for Bethune Bowman in the first six, seven minutes of this game. Cross just now cut the deficit to 11 points. So you could say in a way they finally just erased that opening 12 point run in a costly, just needless turnover from Bethune Bowman in that situation. Ty J. Elliott gets the pass back near the baseline, went right through his legs. Cross inbounding underneath their scoring basket. Dominic Lampkin on the catch. Flute in the low post. Ramsey kicks to the corner, it's Fuller, a shot from distance, no good. Derek Simon on the rebound for Bethune Bowman. Nice pass, McFadden. A block, I thought, was called on that, but no, instead it's a held ball. Possession arrow favors Bethune Bowman, so the Mohawks get possession back after what easily could have been left alone as a block on the play. Those block held ball situations always give me a little bit of pause just because they seem like such 50-50 calls, but I, I understand what the official was seeing there. There was 
a brief tie-up for a moment. Ty J. Elliott on the catch to Simon. No, that's McFadden on the give and go with Avenger loses possession. Ball falls out of bounds. Cross. Now holding serve. Halfway through our second quarter. The Trojans still fighting back in this game. Pass inside to Ramsey, tipped away. Now Ramsey tips the pass away. It's still Bethune Bowman basketball. McFadden. Driving down the floor, spins around a defender, connects with Ja'Cory Judson on the pass. Judson, in and out move, loses the ball. Now it's Caden Ramsey going the other way. Driving through contact, finishes at the rim over the smaller defender. Easy play for Ramsey in that sequence. The lead finally, the deficit I should say, finally cut to single digits by Cross. Judson. Pulls up from the free throw line, no good. A rebound by Micah Flute. Lavelle Joyner's pass nearly knocked away. And now Joyner is fouled on his way to the rim. Foul called against Shakuri Judson, his second of the game. Third team foul for the Fugue Bowman in this quarter. Bryson Robinson re-enters for the Mohawks. Star All-State player of this team, son of head coach Charles McRae. Flute, catch and shoot from the high post. The shot's no good. Trying to go for the rebound. He's going to be whistled for an over the back there. Easy call on a loose ball foul against Flute. It's his first fourth team foul though for Cross. One away from putting Bethune Bowman in the bonus. Not a recipe success when you're already trailing by nearly double digits. Tajay Elliott's pass knocked away out of bounds by Caden Ramsey. Elliott no longer inbounding instead. It's going to be Bryson Robinson. Check that, Derek Simon takes his place. Simon passes in to Terrence McFadden. McFadden finds Elliott. Now it's Robinson. Kicking to Avenger. Tried to go for the one-handed jam. And that pass knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Cross. The Bethune Bowman fans in attendance love it. The Trojans, not necessarily a fan. Now, St. Ball don't lie after a steal on the inbound. Lavelle Joyner sinks the pull-up jumper from the free throw line. The deficit now cut to seven. Chip away, chip away, chip away for Cross. A foul on the other end. This one's going to go against Micah Flute, it looks like. It will. It's his second personal, the fifth team foul for Cross. Bethune Bowman will be in the bonus for the remainder of the quarter. The older, eldest I should say, of the two Avenger brothers at the free throw line. Jalen misses on his first effort for the charity strike. Robinson exits for Bethune Bowman. Jordan Avenger takes his place on the court. Both of the Avenger brothers now on the hardwood. Robinson making his teammates scoot over so he can have the first seat on the bench. Avenger misses both free throws. Simon taps the rebound back out to his teammates though. Bethune Bowman still with possession. Avenger in the corner. Looks for his brother at the top of the key and finds him. Jordan, a miss. Jamez Way going the other direction. Lays it in with ease. 21-16 our score. A 
eight point advantage for Bethune Bowman. This game getting ever so closer. And a timeout comes from Charles McCrary on the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, today's event is available for download. Just click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of this event right to your computer. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We got more basketball action for you. The crowd is loving it right now. Jump is playing on the airwaves. And both fan bases are getting into it. A reminder that you're watching live coverage of the South Carolina High School League Basketball Semifinals on the NFHS Network, presented by Absolute Total Care. NFHSnetwork.com slash SCHSL is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of South Carolina high school playoff action. Coming out of the timeouts from Bethune Bowman. The Mohawks inbound. Ty J. Elliott guarded by the much taller Caden Ramsey at the point of attack. Derek Simon to Avenger. Jalen called for a travel trying to split the defenders. Side Ramsey called for the travel. A few in Bowman, one twenty five to go. Foul called on the play against Lavelle Joyner. That's going to be his third. More free throws coming for the Mohawks. at the free throw line for Bethune Bowman. Makes his first effort at a charity strike. That's Bethune Bowman's first basket in quite some time. That just ended a 9-0 run from Cross. At one point, the score of this game was 21-7 in Bethune Bowman's favor. Now it's 22-16. It's a much different game with those two scores. Elliott makes his second free throw. 23-16 our score. Jamez Way. Stripped by Bryson Robinson, but the ball rolls out of bounds. Last touched by Robinson. And once again, here's Way. Trading passes with Dominic Lampkin. Lampkin sees the 2 3 zone and a timeout called by Shaquan Boone, the head coach of Cross. We're going to take a break at our end, folks. We got 30 seconds before we come back right here on the NFHS Network. We're back. 
Patrick Kamara for you, Pre presenting you with live play-by-play -play coverage. Today and tomorrow, South Carolina High School League State Semifinal Basketball Action, presented to you by Absolute Total Care. Nice deke on the pass. The inbound there from Preston Fuller. Dominic Lampkin ends up drawing a foul on the play as well. Jalen Avenger on the other end of the whistle, it's his first. Fourth team foul for Bethune Bowman. They're one away from sending Cross into the bonus. Now folks, we will have a special guest at halftime. South Carolina Head School League Commissioner, Dr. Jerome Singleton is gonna be joining the program for a few moments. We'll welcome him on air a few moments after we hit that halftime mark. One for two at the line it goes Dominic Lampkin. 23-17 our score in the Florida Center. Bryson Robinson trying to go coast to coast draws the blocking foul. More free throws coming for Bethune Bowman. Well, this game has been a testament to skill, strength, athleticism for both teams to a certain extent. The score at this point also reflects in a way just the ability to limit mistakes. I would say that Bethune Bellman has played better in this game to this point, but it's not been by a sizable margin, really more than anything else. They've just avoided more mistakes or avoided mistakes more often than not than their opponents have. Robinson goes one for two at the free throw line. 24-17 our score. The deficit remains at seven for Cross. Trojans in the half court set. A turnover from Middleton. And a scrum for the ball on the hardwood. Cross has it. Going for a timeout, he gets it with 26 and a half to play in the first half. 24-17, our score at the whistle. It's gonna be a 30 second timeout on your stopwatch for those of you counting seconds at home. Now we are going to have more basketball action for you this week. I'll be live with play-by-play -play coverage of tomorrow's games back here at the Florence Center. We're going to be having the 3A bracket do their girls and guys upper and lower state games. We'll have the girls kicking off at 2 p.m. The upper state faction followed by the boys upper state game at 4. And we'll have the girls lower state game at 6 and the boys lower state title game at 8. Cross in the half court set. Jamez Way loses the ball. Robinson to Avenger on the other end. No good with the left hand. Robinson, the second effort, no good, but he draws a foul on the play. Two free throws coming for Robinson. Another trip to the charity stripe for him this game. Bethune Bowman making a clinic off of visits to the free throw line. Robinson, the head coach's son, the All-State player. Representing his school, his family, and his community in this game. Looking to go at least one of two. This free throw attempt. Second shot, nothing but nylon, it's good. 25-17 lead for Bethune Bowman. Cross with five seconds to play in the first half. Dominic Lampkin trying to get the last shot. Can he get it off? A blocking foul is called on the floor. This is going to lead to free throws. It's not quite a last second shot, but if you're cross right now, trailing by eight points, heading to the half, you'll take it. It's the fifth team foul for Bethune Bowman. Of course, that leads to the bonus for Cross. Dominic Lampkin at the free throw line. A senior guard. Substitution on the court for Cross as well. BJ Middleton, the eighth grader, onto the court. 
My apologies, that's actually Tyshawn Gavins, 22, not 12. And Dominic Lampkin makes the second free throw. That shot's gonna count if it's good! Tyjay Elliott nearly had it, trying to cherry pick on the other end of the floor. I don't think anybody from across saw him on that end of the half court line. 25-19 our score at the halftime break. Bethune Bowman leading cross by six. We got two quarters of play left to decide who gains a spot in the Class A Boys State Championship. Stick around folks, we're gonna take a short break when we come back. South Carolina High School League Commissioner Dr. Jerome Singleton is going to join the program. We're going to talk a little bit of hoops, a little bit of this year's semifinals, and other things to look forward to on the South Carolina High School League calendar. We'll be right back. You're watching live coverage of the NFHS Network. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Center. Patrick Gamar here with South Carolina High School League Commissioner Dr. Jerome Singleton. Mr. Singleton, Dr. Singleton. Uh, we've been doing this now for quite some time. I feel like we have these little like coffee talks, like quarterly almost it seems like with the sports calendar. Um, things are a little bit different for the South Carolina High School League just this time of year. All the events for the basketball championship calendar taking place in Florence. Uh, upper state finals, lower state finals, state championships. Charlie Winsky and I were talking a little bit about that earlier today. Just on your side of things, talk to me about what you've seen so far from this event, how it's been slightly different from years past besides the location part of things, and how you've enjoyed the game so far today. Right. Yes, sir. We just have to be at one site. Um, our final four, for lack of a better term. Every talent, every talent that there is will be at one site. Nobody has to worry about what the lower state looks like or what the upper state looks like. Right, All yes, the talents are going to be here. Uh, teams get a chance to watch each other play instead of watching it on film. I think it's a great atmosphere. It's going to grow. Um, we recognize there are some critics out there that, that, that this is different. All I ask is that they give it a chance, experience it. I understand what experience you're going for. Experience it first, yeah, and then make make a, a decision on it based on what you what you've seen. Uh, you know, to, to to condemn it just on uh, speculation is not fair to it. So if they get a chance to experience it, and, and the feedback we've gotten so far is that it's pretty good. I mean, the spectators like it because they get to see. Uh, all the teams in that class at one time. Right. Uh, I haven't gotten feedback from the coaches as of yet because they've been spending their time coaching. It'll be interesting to see what the feedback is once we get once we get past this. Yes, sir. Speaking from my own experience, so working these games the last handful of years, working some other tournaments in the state around the holiday season, right? Basketball is a huge part of the, of the culture in our state, South Carolina. It's 
we're an SEC school, so a lot of the love goes to, to football. It's a fair weather state. A lot of the love goes to baseball. But I think that at its core, basketball is the state sport, if you will, <laughs> of South Carolina. So for my side of things, having this event all together, a Final Four, like you mentioned, I think it's great. I love it for the game, not just in our state, but beyond. I hope more schools, more states, I should say, see what we're doing here and sort of adopt their own way of doing it for the states that can make it happen. Absolutely. And sure. And in addition to that, it also solves a problem for us. We were struggling trying to find venues right. to host our country. Well, it's all, also, it's a staffing thing as well. You only have so many people to put in so many true. spots when there's games going on at the same time. That is true. That is true. But uh, a lot of our, our venues at the college level, you know, they've got playoff opportunities in front of them, so they're not always readily available for us. So in this case, we only have to find one site as right. opposed to where we used to try to find three sites. One for the upper state, one for the lower state, one for the state finals. we got one site uh, that we can count on. So it, it does solve a problem for us. Yes, sir. And I don't know if you you saw the previous girls game that we had, right? Mm -hmm. Just then, the, the lower state final uh, between Lakeview and Military Magnet. Those two teams have had a lot of history. I made a statement to, to Mark Zona down there at the scorer's booth who's doing PA right now. I think the last few moments of that game was the loudest I've ever heard this Florence Center. I'm serious. I'm serious. And it's it's the class A schools. They're the sure. smallest of the sure. schools competing. Sure. 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 But the noise was there. Yeah, and I think it's going to continue to grow. This is new. Again, I, I can't stress that enough. As more and more people realize that this event is here, I'm hoping to get it to where it's on a calendar, where people expect to come to this because it's a fun time for a family time. And, and, and I think as, as it continues to grow and if, if it's continuing to be supported, I think they'll find that this will be a fantastic time to spend the last part of February and the first part of March. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, something else that I'm curious about, this isn't necessarily related to the high school league itself, but with the success of the collegiate basketball programs in our state as well, and I think some of what we're seeing at the high school level can tie into the collegiate level as well, right? It, not just academically, but athletically as well. Um, do you think with the rejuvenation of the South Carolina basketball program, Clemson ranked as well, they're projected to make the tournament. Seeing, having this event here as well, do you think it's a way to not necessarily capitalize on, on those teams' success, but maybe help continue that popularity at the high school level as well and help it continue to grow? Absolutely. I think the talent here in South Carolina has continued to get better and better and better. But we used to have a selected number of athletes that, that we would consider to be uh, big time basketball players, we're having more and more of those. So, and, and again, if we can just keep them in state and let them go to the Clemsons and the, and the Carolinas and the South Carolina States and the Falcons and, and the likes and the Citadels and the College of Charleston, those guys, I think it only does well to speak well for our state if they have our homegrown to actually uh, you know, support our own state. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Last question for you. Away from this gymnasium right here, right now. What's the South Carolina High School League working on behind the scenes? I know you got something cooking in the pot you're not telling us about. Well, there's always things that we're dealing with. You know, this is the time of year we look at reviewing all of our rules and regulations, our bylaws and our constitution. Yes, sir. And seeing the things that we need to make changes on, those things that we need to keep the same. So in the beginning, the second week in March, we'll actually be in Charleston, South Carolina, reviewing our entire handbook and making some decisions on how we want to do things moving forward for that year. We just, uh, we, we're, we're at, almost at the completion of realignment and all schools are being realigned. Yes, sir. So those schools are going to have to get together and make some decisions on how they want to operate in the classification. So there's a lot going on at this time. Every other year we run into this time where there's really fast paced things that's going on for us. And as we continue, you know, we continue to try to find ways to service our membership. Our, our staff is continuing to grow. We just hired a health wellness and safety person yes, sir. in July, and, and he is making a major impact quickly. Uh, we just hired uh, and rejuvenated our, our student athlete advisory council. That's going to be big for us. So we're always looking for things of which we can help our schools and, and our membership to be better served for our athletes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as always, Dr. Jerome Singleton, Commissioner of the South Carolina High School League, joining us on air at halftime. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the game. I'll be back here tomorrow so we can chat again then. It's always good. Are, are we going to catch up afterwards for, for a light dinner after the game? What, what's going on? <laughs> well, probably the first opportunity is I get to get some rest. But yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. Dinner. I'm, I'm going to go up to Bucky's and then I'm going to put my put my butt to bed in the hotel afterwards. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Commissioner Singleton, thank you for your time as always. I look forward to catching up with you again Appreciate soon. Appreciate the work that you do. You do a fantastic job. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here as always, sir. Thank you.
Uh, NFHS Network fans, South Carolina High School League fans, stick around. We'll be back with second half action between Cross and Bethune Bowman when we come back right here on the NFHS Network. Basketball fans, we're back. If you stuck around in the half, thank you for doing so. You, you we're a part of a pretty fun conversation between myself and, and Dr. Jerome Singleton, Commissioner of the South Carolina High School League. It is part of my job description to have those conversations at the halftime of some of these games, but I genuinely enjoy them. Dr. Singleton's a great guy to speak with. He has a lot of experience um, in athletics in, in our state. He's seen it all, and he's been a part of a lot of the advancements in athletics in, in our state as well. So. He's a seasoned pro, a seasoned vet, if you will. For a young guy like myself, he's someone I like picking the brain of. Uh, Cross and Bethune Bowman in the second half of play in our Class A Boys Lower State Final game. Class A Boys Lower State Final or the State Semifinal, as Dr. Singleton prefers to refer to it as. Excuse me. Cross trailing this game 25-19. That's an important score in the sense that Cross started out this game giving up a 12-0 run to Bethune Bowman. Maybe an opportunity for Cross to flip the script here if they can get out to an early run in the third quarter. Jamez Way, open look from downtown, no good. Jordan Ovinger with the rebounds. Tajay Elliott. Passing the ball up the courts to Jalen Avenger. Avenger dishes to his brother, Jordan. Easy lay-in just in front of the basket. 27-19 our score. Whistle blows. This one's going to go against Jalen Avenger. His second whistle of the game. First team foul for Bethune Bowman. And second half of action. Cross inbounding on the opposite end of the floor after we've switched sides at the halftime break. Caden Ramsey would have been on the receiving end of that pass had it not been knocked away out of bounds, although looks like it caught a deflection off of Ramsey's hands as well. Called against Terrence McFadden. A turnover for McFadden and for Bethune Bowman. And now remember, I said at the end of the second quarter, both these teams have been playing mistake-prone basketball tonight. It, it hasn't been a perfect game from either team. They've been duking it out. There's a light sense of defense and momentum going across his way right now. There it is. Jamez Way, the strip and score on the intercepted pass. Ty J. Elliott going the opposite direction. Whoa, Caden Ramsey, stay on your feet, young man. He just got tabletopped by the support system underneath the basket. That's a scary, scary collision anytime you see it on the basketball court. And Ramsey has been around that area of the basket a few times now in the game. He's checking himself for blood. Looks like he's good. Derek Simon blocked by Ramsey underneath the rim. And now a loose ball foul. This one's going to go against Bethune Bowman, it seems. Terrence McFadden on the other end of the whistle. It's his first infraction of the night. Second team foul for Bethune Bowman in the first two minutes. Coming out of the halftime break. Micah Flute, Jamez Way. Catch and shoot for Dominic Lampkin off the front iron, no good. McFadden on the other end of the pass from Ty J. Elliott. McFadden rises to the rim, a block from Micah Flute. Flute possessed the ball for a brief moment while he was leaning out of bounds. Technically, it's a turnover on Flute. Possession will switch. Bethune Bowman now inbounds underneath their scoring basket. 5.55 to go on the clock in the third quarter. Inbound pass, Elliott, 5'9", sophomore point guard. Now it's Bryson Robinson. 
Back to Elliott, McFadden, Derek Simon in the corner. Wanted to shoot from inside the arc, but elected not to. Now it's McFadden, gets the offensive foul. That was an easy push-off call. I saw it from up here. I almost mentioned it on air, but I didn't have to. The official took the words out of my mouth in the form of his whistle. It's McFadden's second foul. He's now removed from the game in favor of Caden Woods. Five foot ten junior guard forward, making his first appearance in action tonight. Caden Ramsey going to the ten, no good. Rebound. Outlet pass. Jalen Avenger with the finish. 29-21, Bethune Bowman in front. Micah Flute. Tamez Way. Count the basket and the foul. Derek Simon corners the whistle from the official, his second infraction of play tonight. 13 foul for the three Bowman in this third quarter. A six point deficit for Cross. They have a chance now to cut this deficit to five. And they do. It's the smallest deficit they faced since they were down 5 0 in the first quarter. Out of bounds, tipped off the hands of Jamez Way, deflecting the pass. Bethune Bowman still with possession. Simon, not a part of the starting five, but he's starting the second half for Bethune Bowman. Head coach Charles McCrary leaning on his veteran leadership in the form of Simon. Simon, bounce pass to Bryson Robinson at the top of the key. Robinson kicks to the newly entered Caden Woods who shoots from distance. The shot is no good. Simon strips the ball away from Micah Flute. Bethune Bowman once again with possession in the scoring end. IJ Elliott looking for Simon. Simon, catch and shoot. No good. Avenger called for the travel underneath the basket. His shot doesn't count. Inbound for Cross. Way. Lampkin. Way again. Back to Lampkin. Way one more time. Fakes right. Moves to the left. Right handed runner. The putback from Caden Ramsey. Speak with your chest, young man. 29 26. It's a one possession game. We got a good one brewing in Flowtown, ladies and gentlemen. Traveling is called on the floor. Momentum continues to swing in the direction of the Cross Trojans. Make no mistake about it. Caden Ramsey is the Prince Hector to cross his Troy. Preston Fuller, the shot from mid-range, blows a kiss to the defender after the make. It's a one-point ball game, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you didn't turn the TV off midway through the first quarter, because Cross is about to take the lead! Almost a foul on the play. It's the fifth foul against Bethune Bowman. Cross is going to the free throw line. They're in the bonus. Caden Ramsey leading the charge for the Trojans. It's been all cross in the third quarter. Remember, they gave up the first 12 points of this basketball game. Now they're one free throw away from tying it. How about that for battling back? Kanan Ramsey with the putback dunk a moment ago to cut the deficit to one possession. Now ties it with the free throw. Ramsey can take the lead for Cross for the first time in this game with a make here. 
a miss will stay tied. And I'll be honest, I'm not mad about it. I'm a neutral supporter here, folks, and we got a good basketball game brewing. It's tied 29-29 at the Florence Center. Charles McCray calls a timeout for Bethune Bowman. And Flowtown is rocking. set to resume here in just a moment at the Florence Center. 29-29 our score between Cross and Bethune Bowman. A matchup with the defending state champion Christchurch Cavaliers awaits the winner of this game. Bethune Bowman in possession. Tajay Elliott to Corey Judson back to Elliott. Bryson Robinson on the other end of the court. Elliott. Judson catch and shoot from the corner. No good. The rebound tapped out. Cross has the ball. A steal from Derek Simon. Makes the basket with a tough left-handed lay-in. You don't see a big man that big with that much composure and grace around the rim. I'll tell you what. Turnover forced by the Thune Bowman. Avenger going for the slam, no good. Caden Ramsey going the other way. He wants a slam of his own. Count the basket in, one. The foul goes with it. 31, 31 once again, we're tied. The foul goes against Derek Simon for his third of the game. Cross still in the bonus. Kanan Ramsey with another opportunity to give Cross its first lead of the ball game. Simon will exit, taking his place on the hardwood. Jordan Avenger. How about Kanan Ramsey in the second half? Six foot five, tenth grader, an All State player this year. Just sunk the free throw to put Cross on top. 32-31 our score. Ty J. Elliott keeping the ball on a string, but not after deflecting out of bounds. Inbound pass, Lavelle Joyner. Cross possessing the ball with the lead for the first time in this game with two minutes 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's taken them this long to make their mark on this ball game. Going for a two possession lead. Caden Ramsey nearly dunked that ball. <laughs> he nearly brought it down from the rooftop. Instead it's Terrence McFadden on the other end giving the lead right back to the Mohawks. The Thune Bowman ain't out of this, no sir. It's just a one-point game. Ramsey looking for Flute on the inside. He's fouled on his way to the 10. Basket's no good. Jalen Avenger has his hands above his head. He can't believe the whistle. McFadden whistled for the foul. It's his fourth of the game. 144 to play in the third quarter. Micah Flute at the free throw line for Cross. Shaquan Boone and staff looking onwards from the bench. We're tied once again. Jordan Avenger into the game for the Mohawks. Both the Avenger brothers on the hardwood. 
McFadden takes a seat on the bench after his third foul. Flute's second free throw is also good. Bryson Robinson charges baseline. Whistle on the play, but it's not for a charge. It's actually for a reach in against the defense. First team foul for Cross in this quarter. They played. I don't know how to explain it. It's been violent defense in the sense, not physicality wise, but pressure wise. And they haven't committed a foul in this quarter until this point. It's taken six and a half minutes of game time. It's been violent, but it's been cautious isn't the right word for it. Opportunistic, sure you could go with that. But they picked their spots. That's really what I'm trying to say. It hasn't been reckless defense. It's been putting pressure on at the right moments. And we're going to stay tied at 34 after that missed free throw. Dominic Lampkin in a tie ball game. Caden Ramsey, the sophomore, on the catch is fouled. More free throws coming his way. This one's going to go against Jordan Avenger. It's his first whistle of the affair. Again, Cross is still in the bonus. Two free throws for Caden Ramsey. Ramsey's first shot, no good. He's been pretty consistent from the line to this point tonight. One for two, there he goes. 35-34, the lead goes back to Cross. Since we tied our score at 29, we've had four different lead changes. Five different lead changes, counting this one. Lavelle Joyner to Jamez Way from distance, no good. Ramsey with the rebound, the putback is there. Caden Ramsey is showing some special stuff in this quarter. Dare I say it. He could be getting the attention of some college coaches the way he's playing right now. Guarding the primary ball handler for the other team. And leading the offense as well. It's a turnover for Jalen Avenger. He stepped out of bounds. Cross is getting the ball back. A three-point lead for Cross as it stands right now. Their largest of the game. They trailed the whole first half. And now they have an opportunity to make this a two-possession game with a bucket here. Lavelle Joyner. A steal for Bryson Robinson. Robinson going the other way. Count the bucket. Robinson was so caught up in the moment, he thought he was called for an offensive foul. In reality, Lavelle Joyner has whistled for his fourth foul. He's one foul away from fouling out. And Bryson Robinson enters the free throw area looking to tie the game. And he does just that. 37 all in the floor and center. 18 seconds remain in the third quarter. Preston Fuller dishing to Lampkin. Cross court pass intercepted. Ovinger catches up with the pass from Johnson. The deep shot, no good. Rebounded by Lampkin. Time expires before he can get the shot off. Ladies and gentlemen, 37 all is our score with one quarter of play left to decide who will be playing for a Class A state championship in the state of South Carolina. This is how you draw it up going into this game. This is the exact situation you want. Tie
game, eight minutes left on the clock. Who wants it more? Stick around, find out. More High School Hoops Championship coverage for you when we get back right here on the NFHS Network. score in our final quarter of play in our second Class A semifinal. It's been a tale of two halves. Bethune Bowman started this game on a 12 to nothing lead in the first quarter. They led by as much as 14 points at one point. The score was 21 to 7 then. Since then, Cross has been on a 30 to 16 run. They've nearly doubled the point total of Bethune Bowman since that moment in the game. But Bethune Bowman isn't letting that stop them. They just took another lead. 39 37 our score. Defense erupts for the Trojan faithful in attendance. An injury occurs on the far side of the court. Cross is playing five on four basketball and they don't even know it. Now it's Bethune Bowman going the other way. They're playing down a man. The officials have yet to stop play. And now finally a whistle blows. Play is so intense, even the officials don't realize that a man is down. Clock stops at six minutes, 50 seconds. 39-37 our score with Bethune Bowman in front. We'll take another break and resume after the injury right here on the NFHS Network. Going to college for esports feels amazing. Growing up, it's something I never thought would happen. My family never thought it would happen. And then within two and a half years, here I am. He's actually a madman whenever he comes to play on the sticks. You know, he's going to be the first one that pursues this into an academic career. Me getting an esports scholarship could show other students that it's possible for them to, as long as they put their mind to it and put some effort into it. Absolute total care. 39-37 our score. Bethune Bowman in front looking to make it a two-possession game. It's good. Caden Woods from downtown. A five-point lead for 
Bethune Bowman. 6.20 to go in regulation. Jemez Way pulls up from inside the free throw line. No good. Second effort by Micah Flute, also no good. The third effort, not there. A rebound for Bryson Robinson to Bethune Bowman. He picks up his dribble and connects with Caden Woods down the court. Woods just hit that big three-pointer a moment ago. Now it's Robinson. Ty J. Elliott. Hands back off to Robinson. Putting the ball in the hands of their all-star player. Robinson glides to the rim and is called for the charge. Offensive foul on the play. He immediately favors his head after falling to the deck. He's a little shaken up. Training staff sprinting onto the floor. That looked like a hard fall. Again, remember his head coach, Charles McCray, also his father. This would be a huge game-changing or potentially breaking loss for Bethune Bowman if Bryson Robinson cannot continue. Robinson picks himself off the floor, gets back to the bench. Looks like we're going to be shooting free throws after that foul. No, perhaps not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. My apologies. It was an offensive foul in the previous play, so Robinson's called for the charge. It's his third personal first team foul for Bethune Bowman. All right, we're caught up. 5.35 remaining in regulation. Caden Ramsey, high post, passing to his teammate, a miss. Ramsey gets the rebound. Now it's Flute with a third effort put back. Man, the height for Cross, for Cross the, the rebounding in this game for Cross, I'm sure is in their favor rather than Bethune Bowman's. They've had so many second, third, fourth chance points. But it doesn't matter if Tajay Elliott is dropping three bombs from way downtown, that one was. 45-39, a six point lead for Bethune Bowman. Shaquan Boone calls a timeout for Cross. Five minutes to go in regulation. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more high school hoops action in a moment on the NFL. With great brands at the best prices at Academy Sports and Outdoors, you'll always find more fun. More of the. <laughs> Action resumes in Flowtown. You're watching NFHS Network's coverage of the South Carolina High School League Basketball Semifinals presented by Absolute Total Care. What a night of basketball this has been in the Palmetto State. The last two games, first the Lower State Girls game between Lakeview and Military Magnet, and then this one between Cross and Bethune Bowman. This is certainly setting the standard for the rest of the high school hoop season in South Carolina, at least what remains of it. Cross and the Blue Jerseys trailing by six. The 440 go in the fourth quarter. The miss by Jamez Way from distance. Robinson with the rebound for Bethune Bowman. Way knocks the ball away. It's a steal for Cross. The Trojans penetrating the lane thanks to Caden Ramsey, who gets the easy points at close range. 45-41, both teams in the 40s at this point. Robinson, a miss from point blank. McFadden with the offensive rebound, kicks out to Elliott. Elliott trades, passes with Caden Woods and slows it down near the top of the key. Receives a screen from McFadden. Now gives way to Robinson. Patience is key in this time. Don't rush for failure. Get a good shot. Robinson, dribble, drive, pull up, high post, look, no good. Flute with the rebounds. Lampkin. Now Fuller, back to Lampkin. Lampkin. Loses his handle. Jemez Way wanted to shoot from distance on the catch, but thought against it. Trying to get it inside to Ramsey. Instead, it's a shot from deep. From Lampkin, no good. Robinson comes down with the rebound for the Mohawks. 3.15 to go in regulation. Ty J. Elliott sprinting the floor. 
trying to make a play for his team. McFadden's shot is blocked at the rim. Volleyball underneath the basket on the tip drill. Robinson holds serve at the top of the key. Passes inside to McFadden who's fouled on the shot. Basket no good. Caden Ramsey whistled for his second foul of the game. First team foul for Cross as well. Both teams playing a much cleaner game foul-wise. I will say, the refs might be letting him play a little bit. From what I've seen, just a little bit. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not complaining, just being a neutral observer. And I'm loving it too. These guys are playing hard fought basketball. Substitutions for both sides. A couple of fresh faces on the court actually. Tyshawn Gavins for Cross. Jaleel Stanley for Bethune Bowman. Six forty-one. Our score two fifty-seven remaining in regulation. Make it forty-seven forty-one. Ramsey inbounding. Mohawk faithful in attendance. Wants some defense, and they got it right there. Avenger steals it away. Now Lampkin try to do the same thing. Only manages to knock it out of bounds, however. What an effort from Cross after trailing by 12 to start play in this game. Fighting her way all the way back. Having a multi-possession lead at one point. And now an even bigger credit to Bethune Bowman for not letting momentum sweep them away and, and take the game by storm. They've remained focused. A miss from close range there for Jordan Avenger. Ball knocked out of bounds, last touch. Avenger who just missed from close range will exit. Staley playing the press on Jamez Way. And Lavelle Joyner. Way looking inside to Ramsey. Ramsey against the much smaller defense. going to the rack. Derek Simon with the block. Simon looking for the behind the back pass. Eventually ends up in the hands of a teammate, but it's a miss at close range. Ramsey has the ball, and a blocking foul called on the floor against Derek Simon. It's the fourth whistle against Simon. Second team foul against Bethune Bowman. Simon couldn't believe the call. And that is his fifth personal, it seems. Got another substitution on the court. With a few moment, it looks like Avenger back into the game. That's Jordan, one of the two brothers who just checked out a moment ago. 47-41, two minutes to play in regulation. Cross. Needs points and fast to get back in this game. Bethune Bowman playing lights out defense. On the other end, Terrence McFadden running the floor for points. A eight point lead for Bethune Bowman. And a clutch bucket there from Lavelle Joyner. His team back down to six points. Bethune Bowman. Holding serve in the half court set. Avenger to Ty J. Elliott. Time dwindling in regulation. Jaquan Boone wants the foul. He gets it from his team. Bowman okay. crowd getting ever so louder. With every second that ticks off the clock. Tyshawn Gavins to the bench, Preston Fuller back onto the court. Two team fouls for both squads. Cross will have to foul another three times to put the food Bowman in the bonus. And Alyssa to free throws perhaps get possession back earlier than originally thought of. Right away a steal. Caden Ramsey and Ramsey loses the ball. Ty J. Elliott on the other end with the steal.
steal. Robinson looking for McFadden on the other end of the floor. McFadden attacks and is blocked by Ramsey. But Jalen Amager with the putback. 51-43 with less than a minute to play. The writing's on the wall. The fat lady ain't singing it yet, but she's warming up those vocal notes. Bethune Bowman, one minute away and less from a state championship appearance. Laval Joyner goes to coast. For the travel. He's feeling it right now. He's trying to score again and again and again as long as there's time to. Charles McCurry, the head man for the Mohawks, urging his team to get back on defense. They lead by 10. This game was tied 37 37 at one point. Since then, Bethune Bowman has gone on a 16 6 run. Time. Dwindling down in this game. A foul called against Cross. It's going to go against Micah Flute for the block. All quiet from the Cross Trojan supporters in attendance. Last second substitutions on the court for both teams. It's very apparent at this point. And while this starting group for Cross is leaving the floor, I got to give credit to these young men, man. I, they're not going to win this basketball game, but the fact that this is even, it was a close game in the fourth quarter after giving up the first 12 points of the game, still trailing pretty deep, heading into the second half. It's been an incredible basketball game. It's, it's not close down to the final possession, but... This has been an awesome game of basketball for both these teams. Very well played for both sides. I think either team would be a worthy opponent for Christchurch in the Class A final. Behind the back look to Robinson. Nearly had the jam to finish. Instead, time expires. A 53-43 final for Bethune Bowman. The Mohawks are going to be eating buckies tonight. And they'll be waiting for a matchup against Christchurch in the state championship Saturday right back here in the Florence Center. Mark your calendars, Mohawks fans. We'll see you Saturday. All I do is win plays over the speakers. The game is over. An incredible season for Cross. They finished the year with a record of 23-6. and six. An incredible job from Shaquan Boone in this game this season. They've got some really young talent on their team coming back next year. They're only graduating one starter and really only a couple of guys who play. They're going to be back in this game come next year. I guarantee it right here, right now. Guarantee it. However, Bethune Bowman awaits the next test. Christ Church right around the corner. Charles McRae said before the game, I've been praying all week, and if we win, I'll be giving thanks to the Lord upstairs. And now he's celebrating with his fans on the other side of the court. You can tell how much this win means to this community. Bethune Bowman feels like they ain't done yet either. On behalf of our producer at home, Stefan Lawler, LeVar Jones on the ones and twos today, making it happen. And of course, our man Cliff Muller on the camera making sure all you folks at home can see what's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in with us today at the Florence Center. My name is Patrick Lamar. It has been an absolute joy to call these games today. We've had some incredible basketball, and I look forward to rejoining you tomorrow. However, now that we're done here tonight, i got to go home, get some sleep, and reset for tomorrow.
inspirational and motivational. It's the Logan Power Show. Informational to help you grow. Logan, 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 Logan Power Show.